In this particular research, I wanted to focus more on the terminology of muscle loss as opposed to sarcopenia, although secondary sarcopenia be classified as that as well in a majority of individuals experiencing muscle loss. So without further ado, let's get right into the research. We're going to focus a lot on HMB more than anything else, but as well, a little bit of vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, whey protein, as well as very important physical activity to make this all come together. So without further ado, let's get right into the research as follows. An overview of sarcopenia focusing on nutritional treatment approaches. Sarcopenia can be classified into primary and secondary sarcopenia. The form is related to aging, begins after the fourth decade of life. After that, there is muscle loss around 8% per decade until the age of 70, which subsequently increases to 15% per decade decade. On the other hand, secondary sarcopenia can affect all individuals and may result from various factors, including physical inactivity, malnutrition, endocrine disorders, neurogenic diseases, inflammation, and cachexia. Understanding the multiple mechanisms involved in this onset and progression of sarcopenia allows for us to develop strategies that can prevent, treat, or at least mitigate muscle loss caused by increased protein breakdown. Again, we're going to focus more on the supplements than actually the physical activity itself, although that is equally as important. To proceed, HMB, the star here, the true star here. Beta-hydroxy, beta-methylbutyrate is a molecule derived from metabolism of leucine, which is able to stimulate muscle protein synthesis and suppress muscle protein breakdown. However, only about 5% of leucine is converted into HMB, which makes the natural levels of HMB quite low after the ingestion of leucine. The recommended dose of HMB to stimulate muscle anabolism is 3 grams per day, so 60 grams of leucine are necessary to obtain the required amount of HMB. So a lot of people are going to supplement directly with HMB. To proceed, HMB works by inhibiting protein degradation pathways, particularly the ubiquitin proteasome system which plays a key role in muscle loss. This is especially beneficial during conditions of physical stress, such as prolonged immobilization, periods of inactivity, chronic diseases, and older adults suffering from, i.e. sarcopenia. I previously mentioned HMB activates, I'm going a little bit ahead here, I'm going to speak kind of fast as well, faster, protein synthesis via the mTOR mechanism rapid pathway, which represents the main central anabolic signaling pathway for muscle growth. Stimulation of the mTOR C1 through light leucine to independent sensing pathways promotes the accumulation of new proteins within muscle tissue, i.e. counteracting muscle mass loss and aiding muscle repair and regeneration. This anabolic action helps maintain or improve muscle function, especially during periods when muscle repair is crucial. Here is a real interesting tidbit in regard to HMB that a lot of people, including myself, were not aware of. Another mechanism mediating the beneficial effects of HMB on muscle protein synthesis is its anti-inflammatory effects. Yes, anti-inflammatory effects and reduction in oxidative stress, both of which contribute to muscle degradation. Chronic inflammation and oxidative damage are major factors that accelerate muscle mass loss in aging individuals and patients with chronic conditions. And just to see the graphic here as follows, you can see leucine as far as the conversion to HMB, i.e., not to be to reiterate too often, it looks like taking HMB by itself may be a quicker route to go. Highlight number one, different dosages of whey protein, 15 to 40 grams a day, and vitamin D, 100 IUs, very low, to 800 IUs, were used for more or less than 12 weeks. Whey protein, especially at dosages of greater than 20 grams a day, significantly improved appendicular lean mass in elderly individuals with sarcopenia or frailty, but were not effective in healthy subjects. You want to see what made it effective? Here we go. On the other hand, the combination of whey protein and vitamin D produced more pronounced benefits even in short-term studies of less than 12 weeks, not only in frail sarcopenic individuals, but also in healthy subjects, probably through a correction of low vitamin D levels, i.e. postulate. Not going to overuse i.e. too much, i.e. So we're postulating that vitamin D is a component that correlates well with whey protein in helping even healthy individuals with lean muscle mass. Highlight number two, recent guidelines on protein needs for patients with sarcopenia suggest a protein intake of 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight per day, especially in patients with severe renal impairment, except, except in patients with re severe renal impairment, especially was not the word to use there. Researchers highlighted that an intake of approximately 25 to 30 grams of high quality protein per meal 
represents the optimal level to stimulate muscle protein synthesis both in young and elderly individuals. However, in older adults, the muscle anabolic response is reduced when proteins are consumed in combination with carbohydrates, something I would like to see elucidated in greater detail in the future. So when proteins are consumed in combination with carbohydrates, the anabolic response is reduced. Interesting. Kind of makes you think of the keto diet. Or when protein intake is less than 20 grams per meal. Highlight number three. An important cause of primary sarcopenia is an activity is worth noting that 10 days, just a mere 10 days, of bed rest in healthy older adults, 65 plus or minus five years, resulted in a 30% reduction in muscle protein synthesis rate with a loss of nearly one kilogram in lean leg mass and 15.6% loss in leg strength. Just a mere 10 days. This loss of lean leg mass is nearly three times greater than that observed in healthy young men and women after 28 days of bed rest. These dramatic losses of muscle mass in such short periods, typical of hospitalizations, often result in catastrophic loss of strength, functionality, and independence. Henceforth, a narrative review looking for nutritional strategies to help mitigate that damaging effect. Conclusion. One potential treatment of sarcopenia is based on nutritional interventions, including adequate caloric and protein intake and specific nutrients that support muscle health. Such nutrients include natural food, rich in whey proteins, and omega-3 fatty acids, as well as nutritional supplements like branched-chain amino acids, which we didn't cover too much in detail because HMB being a metabolite of leucine, uh, beta-hydroxymethylbutyrate, and vitamin D, along with food for special medical purposes. It is important to emphasize that physical exercise and special resistance training not only promotes muscle protein synthesis, on their own, but also work synergistically with nutritional strategies to enhance their effectiveness. Very important. An incredible narrative review, picking out not necessarily the whole range of things that may help, but some very important factors that can help mitigate the impact of sarcopenia or chronic conditions resulting in cachexia or basically muscle loss overall. Still, even with muscle gains, which a lot of us are more focused on, pretty dang impressive. Gratitude to the researchers for doing such a national, national, for doing such an incredible uh, narrative review. And as always, I am humble you watch. Look forward to what you and I discover next week. All right, catch you all next time. See you then. Bye.